Hey everybody, it's Joe the 3D Printing Professor, and imagine that you're at a family gathering in some remote location, and you've brought the old camp stove for cooking hot dogs for everybody. You fire up the camp stove, but those old plastic knobs, you give it a twist, and it breaks off in your hand. However, you are a prepared adventurer, and you've got the Plica One, a small format, battery-operated 3D printer that you can just fire up, print off a new camp stove knob, and be cooking hot dogs in no time. Or imagine that you're uh, in a farmhouse in a, in a post-apocalyptic wasteland where aliens are going to destroy you if you're too noisy and your kids are starting to get restless. So you pull out the Plinko One 3D printer and print off some fidget toys for them. And hopefully the 3D printer isn't too noisy either. You know what? Bad example. But I'm not in marketing. And you know who else isn't in marketing? The team who are making the Plinko One 3D printer that is currently on Kickstarter. Now, I wanted to bring more eyes to this campaign and let people know about it because, well, they've got a week left and they haven't met their goal. Now, there are probably a couple of reasons why they haven't met their goal, and we'll discuss those later. But for right now, I want to let you know about this campaign and this 3D printer just to see if it gets you interested. This 3D printer, as you can see, folds down for easy storage, which is super cool, and it's battery operated. But on top of that, it has a movement system that I've never seen any other 3D printer do. See, the y-axis doesn't move the bed back and forth it just moves the z-axis back and forth the z-axis is riding on a y-axis movement system and the x-axis is on that z-axis now this might be a problem because if any one of these axes have any sort of fumble or wiggle in them then that wiggle is going to be translated across the entire movement system and your prints are going to be ridiculously inaccurate However, this thing looks like it's built like a tank, and those movement systems look very secure. Also, it's a very small build area, so if it were inaccurate at the ends of it, we'll just print closer to the movement system, you'll be fine. So that's pretty cool. And overall, I'm impressed. As a guy who has taken 3D printer, strapped it to his wrist to print out in the wilderness with, I get the idea of this 3D printer, and I think... It's super cool. Now, if you're looking at this and you're going, man, that is a neat idea. And these guys, yeah, they're not great on the marketing. They're really not doing much to like give you scenarios. That's why I opened this video the way that I did. Putting the idea of the 3D printer into people's lives is a good marketing technique that they're just not doing. That's because they're not marketing people. They're engineering people and they're making a good engineering product. Uh, there's another thing that their campaign does. Again, at this point, I want to emphasize, if you've seen this, I want you to commit to backing them. If, if you've seen this and you've gone, yeah, that's actually a pretty neat idea. I want you to commit to backing them at some level. We'll talk about the levels in just one second. But the, for the tangible people who are running this campaign, there's something else that I want to point out. Every part of this campaign has a little footnote right here that says future improvements. That is death from a marketing standpoint, because what's that say to people? It says, don't back this one. Our next one will be better. But you're not going to get to do the next one if you don't sell this one. So people expect, people understand that there will be an iteration, a development. There will be something better in the future, but let's not talk about that right now. Let's talk about this. Let's talk about what you can get right now. Again, if you are sold on this idea, if you think that it's a cool idea, I want you to support them because even if this campaign doesn't succeed, I want them to see a volume of people that will make them go, ooh, we should keep going because the world needs more innovators like this who are doing cool things and making the world a better place. So let's talk about where you can back them and how much you can back them and what you can get for it. So to begin with, let's get past the $1. You can back at $10 and get your name on the supporter project. I think that's a great place to back. I think that that's fantastic. And keep in mind, if the campaign doesn't meet its funding goals, you won't be charged for that. But 
If you would actually like to try to make one of these yourself, you can get the step files for 30 pounds because this is in London. It's, it's not dollars, but that's all right. Conversions are, we'll figure that out. They're selling time lapses. I don't know who wants time lapse, uh, time lapse. I don't know, time lapse. Uh, you could get the CAD files and the bill of materials. Great place to start if you want to build these ones yourself. But what if you just want the 3D printer? Well, that's, that's not available. Yeah, they're not actually using this campaign to produce and sell the 3D printer. And I'm sympathetic to the difficulty that that would involve, especially, especially seeing how they're in London, in the UK, but the majority of people who are going to buy this are probably in the United States. The United States is a huge, huge market. I mean, in terms of land area alone. So they're going to have to think about not just production and making it and where they're going to make it. Are they going to make it in London? Are they going to make it in China? Are they going to make it somewhere else? But they also have to think about shipping it to an American market. And I get it. I get it. That's not going to be real easy, but that is where the biggest success in a campaign like this is going to be. Most people don't want to just have, here's how we did it. Now you figure it out yourself. They want to either have a kit that's ready to go with a list of materials that are ready and tested for other people to produce, or they want the product. They just want to get the thing. Now, if this campaign blows up after this video, fingers crossed, and they see that there is a market for this. Even if people are just backing on the lowest level just to tell them, hey, this is great. I would love to get, you know, their backing numbers up tenfold just so that they can go, okay, we need to pursue this further. I think it would be worthwhile to partner with an existing manufacturing company and say, hey, we've got this audience of people who are hungry for this, who want to know more about this, you produce the 3D printer, you use your channels for production and dis distribution, and, you know, we'll take a cut of it for the idea. They've definitely told, if we see a 3D printer like this show up anywhere else in the future, we will know who did it first because of this campaign. But I think that they should leverage that. I think that they should capitalize on that. But they're not going to if this campaign stays at eight backers for the rest of this week. So... If you've seen this and if you're like, hey, that's pretty cool, I want to support it, please jump in and support it right now so that they know that there are people who want to see this. And hopefully in the future, we'll see more cool and innovative ideas out of these people. This is what Kickstarter was made for, and I really want to see this group succeed. But that's it for this video. I want to thank you very much for watching, and I want to remind you that you are a child of God, so you're special to me. So take care of yourself, and if you can, find somebody else who needs taking care of, because we all need each other. I'll see you next time.